Good day. Uh, today I want to show you how to run a Pearson correlation test, which is one of the most often used uh, tests in statistics. Um, it's not a very difficult test, but often the correlation, the Pearson correlation test is misused. So first of all, let's start with an example. Um, this is a eucalypt tree from the eucalyptus genus, and it grows all over Australia. But unfortunately in Australia, most forests have been uh, cut, so which means that remaining forest is highly fragmented. So you have all these little forest patches spread over the country. So what we wanted to know was if the size of the forest uh, correlates to the height of the highest tree that was still present in the forest. So we collected data for somewhere around 15 different forest patches, and in each forest patch we measured the height of the tree. So let's take a look at this data set. So we attach the data set with the usual commands and then if we click here in a data frame on the on the data itself we can actually take a look at it. So we have about 14 forests so the, the column forest ID is the the number of the forest patch that we investigated. Then the forest size is the well the size of the forest in hectares and then the highest tree is the height of whatever highest tree there was in that forest in meters. And what we want to know is that if you have a larger forest, if whether or not you're more likely to encounter a higher tree. So if forest size and the height of the highest tree are correlated. So for that we want to do a Pearson correlation test. Um, a lot of people don't know it, but you cannot just run a Pearson correlation test. You really have to check your assumptions first. And the Pearson correlation test really has quite a lot of assumptions. So the first assumption is that, which is quite obvious, is that samples have to consist of related pairs. Uh, what that means is if you look at our data set, uh, this means that for each forest um, ID, so for each unique forest, we have, we have two measurements. First, the size, second, uh, the height of the highest tree. So these two, they are uh, related pairs for this forest ID. So this is how your data frame has to look like before you can run the Pearson correlation test or any correlation test in general. Also important is that both variables X and Y, um, they have to be continuous, so not ordinal or you can't use classes, so they have to be continuous variables and they have to be linearly related. So there has to be some kind of linear relationship. Um, we can take a look at that if we just simply plot forest size against the highest tree with very simple coding, so just plot um, then between brackets forest size and highest tree. If we run this, we have a very simple plot. And if you look at this scatter plot, it looks as if there is some sort of linear relationship. So there's no weird patterns. Um, there are no peaks or there's not a unimodal pattern. So it's linear, it appears to be linear. So the second assumption is met. Then the third assumption before we can run the test is that uh, the variables have to follow a bivariate normal distribution. Now this is quite complex and I don't really want to go into the details of this assumption, but typically in practice what you want to do if you want to test if, if this is the case is you look at um, the normal quantile plots of both factors separately and if uh, both factors or both, both variables seem to be normally distributed then we can assume that mostly uh, we're looking at the bivariate normal distribution. In theory, it's a bit more complicated than this, um, but this is how we're going to do it. So let's first look at the normal quantile plot of the first variable, which is forest size. What we want to see is that all dots are scattered around this straight line, so there should not be any weird patterns. Uh, and this, is, this seems to be the case, so we're looking at normal distribution for um, forest size. We can do the same, we can draw the same normal quantile plot for the second variable which is the highest tree and again it looks quite good so we have we see that the dots are scattered along this straight line so it's good so we're looking at um, two variables that follow a normal distribution and because of that we we assume for now that um, that this assumption has been met then the fourth assumption is that we need to have um, homogeneity of variances and this is, this is more difficult to understand because in the correlation test, this means that uh, the variance of one variable 
uh, it should be stable at all levels of the other variable. This what this actually means, and I can I can best show this with an example, um, is that what you don't want to see is a scatter plot that looks like this. So this is another example from another data set. So what we see is that um, there is some kind of cone shaped scatter curve, which means that the variance, if you go further down, uh, if, if you go towards the larger forests, the variance of the highest tree becomes also larger. And this is something uh, we, we don't want to see if we run a Pearson correlation test. So if you see this type of scatter plot, then a Pearson correlation test is probably not the best option. But if we look at, if we rerun um, this plot code and we look at our plot, we don't see such uh, cone shaped scatter plot. So it seems to be quite good. So it means that in this case, probably um, we can assume that the assumption of homogeneity of variances have been, has been met. And the fifth assumption is that there should be no major outliers. Again, we can look at the scatter plot uh, and there don't seem to be any major outliers. So we're probably also good on this assumption. So if we've checked all these five assumptions, then we can run the actual Pearson correlation test, which is actually very simple. But what you have to keep in mind is that if you run the test, um, you're just checking if two variables, which we for now call X and Y variables, whether or not they are linearly correlated. We are not uh, testing for any causa causal relationship. So correlation does not mean uh, causation. So the, there is no dependent or independent factor in the correlation. You're just looking at the correlation of two independent factors and that's it. So this is the code to run the correlation. It's quite simple. Um, the only thing you have to, you, you cannot forget is to, um, is to clarify the method that you want to use. So method has to equal Pearson because we're running the Pearson correlation test. So we run this test. This is a output. So if you're writing a paper, what you want to uh, certainly report in the result check section is the degrees of freedom, which is 12 in our case, 12 because it's 14 data points minus two, the 12, then the p-value, the p-value is much smaller than 0.05, which means in our case that there is a significant correlation between forest size and the highest tree. Um, and this is the Pearson correlation coefficient R, so that's 0.8. You also want to report this Pearson correlation coefficient in a paper, it's very important. Then finally, uh, we can also visualize the data with a, a plot, We've already done this, but we want to make the plot a bit better than the one we've plotted right now. So for that, we want to load the library ggplot2. I've already installed it. In case you haven't installed it yet, you can install it with this code. So we call the library, and then this is the code uh, to run a very simple, to make a very simple plot where we can see that on the x-axis there's forest size and hectares, and on the y-axis there's the height of the highest tree. And based on our data, we can, um, and based on the tests, we can now um, assume that there is a significant positive correlation between uh, both variables. Uh, if you want to access the code or you want to, to practice with the data set, you can download it in the link below this video. Thanks for watching.